Hey guys, welcome to one of my favorite places in the world, Uray, Colorado. And we're here about to do a really great comparison test between the brand new Bronco and the Foreigner TRD Pro. And we're gonna run these guys up Imogene Pass, which I think is one of the most spectacular passes in all of Colorado. And that video is gonna be a highly produced video. We're gonna have drones, multiple camera angles, and of course, it's gonna take time to edit. But before we do that, we thought if you're shopping or cross shopping a Forerunner TRD Pro with the Bronco, we would give you a walk around to show you the difference between the two. And to help me do that, I've got Tommy. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> so in this video, we'll show you the uh, changes and the differences between the Toyota and the Ford. And then at the end, we'll talk about which one you should buy and why. Yeah, uh, and let's talk about the most important thing, Tommy, which is the color, no, the price. <laughs> so this is a 2021 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, as you see it equipped, about 52,000. This is a 2021 Ford Bronco first edition, as you see it equipped, about 63,000. So 11 grand more than the Toyota. But there are really like three cars that compete head to head, right? There are these two, and then of course is the Jeep Wrangler. And we've done videos with those. So if you wanna see a Defender versus a Wrangler versus our Bronco, Go check out TFL Off-Road, but today we're so pleased to have the Forerunner. You know, the biggest difference, of course, between these two is the price, because you can get a price Bronco that's comparative to the Forerunner. Uh, it's, of course, the fact that the Bronco is a convertible. That's right, yeah, but why don't you pop the hood on the Toyota, and we will start with the powertrain differences. Now, this is a fifth generation of Forerunner. It has been around for going on a decade now, but it is still one of the best vehicles in its class. Only one engine option, a four liter V6, 270 horsepower, 276 pound feet of torque. Now from a power standpoint, it is pretty far down compared to the Bronco, but on a reliability standpoint, this engine is one of the most stout, most reliable engines you can buy maybe ever. It's mated to one transmission choice, a five speed automatic, but if you're looking for your vehicle to last you tens, hundreds of thousands of miles, this is certainly the vehicle to do it with little difficulty. Now, comparatively, the Bronco is very sophisticated. This engine you see here is a 2.7 liter twin turbo V6. So it's got turbochargers on it. It's got 330 horsepower. So we're talking some 60 more horsepower and 415 pound feet of torque. Yeah, it's right out of the uh, Ford F-150. And funnily enough, in the Ford F-150, uh, this is a rocket of an engine. Uh, We've done some drag racing and this outside of the new um, power boost, which is a hybrid, is the fastest engine you can get in an F-150. But in the Bronco, Tommy, it ain't so quick. Well, I think it's a little quicker than the Toyota you see to the pants, but it certainly isn't a rocket ship. And that's because this vehicle weighs over 5,200 pounds. So this is a very, very heavy vehicle. Now this does have a 10 speed automatic. I'm told that this is the 10 speed out of the Ford Explorer actually. So not quite the HD application in the F-150, but it's still, um, is a very good transmission, at least from the testing we've done. If you want a smaller choice, there's also a 2.3 turbo four out of the Ranger, and you can get that with a 10 speed or the automatic, now or sorry, or the manual. Now we've had this truck uh, for a month. Look what I just noticed, check this out. Alex, show. Yep, they wanted to make sure every square was checked off. They got- What's up with that? <laughs> they, they, they checked every square and every rectangle to make sure that they were right angles. Now the other big difference, between uh, besides the fact that this is a convertible, of course, is with the tires. You want to show them the difference, Tommy? Well, this is a TRD Pro equipped 4Runner. So this is the most off-road worthy equipped 4Runner you could buy. Now we're rolling on a set of Nitto um, Terra Grappler all-terrain tires, a pretty decent all-terrain, and that is wrapped around a 17-inch wheel. Now this is about a 32-inch tall tire, but comparatively, that's really small next to the Bronco. So this is the first edition of what they call the Sasquatch package. Sasquatch means that we're rolling on 35 inch tall tires. Okay, more like 34 and some change, but these are the Goodyear Territory MTs. And these are massive, but of course, not every Bronco comes equipped with these big tires. A lot of them come more equipped like the uh, Toyota with a smaller um, piece of rubber on it. You know, uh, let me show you two really cool Easter eggs before we get to the inside and talk about the uh, kind of the off-road goodies. So on the TRD Pro, if you look, uh, Oh, it's not, it's only on the Tacoma. I thought it was here too. Nope. It doesn't say TRD Pro, but it does say TRD Pro way under there. So the big skip plate has TRD Pro. The Bronco has a pretty cool uh, little Easter egg. Oh, 
it's right there. So the original Bronco came in two, three configurations. There was the kind of the crossover, the one that everybody cuts and lifts. Uh, then there was the half cab, which we had, remember? And then there was the Roadster. You could actually get an original Bronco without a top. And there are all three original Broncos. So let's do this, Alex. I'll have you drop in, uh, jump into the passenger side and I'll step in the driver's seat. So the, the Forerunner uses a very functional interior, albeit maybe a little dated, but still is one of the highest quality in its class. So if we step in here, you'll notice leather upholstery across the seats with the TRD logo stitched into the headrest. A very kind of old school dash, textured dash material, but doesn't feel cheap. In fact, nowhere in this interior would I say any of the plastics feel cheap. Everything you touch at least has some level of quality finish to it, and it's very thoughtfully laid out. So, uh, push button start, foot on the brake, and it comes to life. Leather wrapped steering wheel here, controls down both sides, and one nice thing about the Forerunner, it does come standard with adaptive cruise control, the lane keep assist, because it uh, is a Toyota, and only Toyotas now have the full suite of safety technology but kind of a basic set of gauges so we've got analog gauges for both the tachometer the speedometer as well as temperature and fuel with a small digital readout there in the center this as you can see it is the latest generation of toyota's infotainment system it works pretty well it's looking a little bit dated i'll be the first to admit that but it still has all the tech you come to expect navigation phone connectivity um, bluetooth audio you know all that jazz below that automatic climate control dual zone i love these big chunky knobs um, these are kind of straight out of the tundra so that you can use them in gloves i think that's a nice touch one usb port down there in the middle that showing its age and then we get to the four-wheel drive controls so to put this vehicle into four-wheel drive uh, of course neutral and then you've got a j selector to go into low range very smooth selection in low range and it's nice to have a mechanical linkage instead of just a knob um, trd shift knob down here for the five speed automatic and then if we move down to the middle heated seats and a foreigner staple the roll down rear window one of the best features in any generation of Forerunner is the rear window. But if we look up here, this is where we start playing with the off-road goodies. So these two knobs control a couple of different things. First of all, this knob on the left is what they call crawl control. So you flick it on, and then this is kind of like off-road cruise control. It will allow you to maintain a certain speed without ever touching the gas off-road, and it will send power where it needs to go. To the right of that, we see something called multi-terrain select. This allows you to change the different uh, modes depending on the terrain. You've got rock, you've got mud, sand, dirt, you've got loose rock, that kind of thing. Then up here, A-Track, the most highly underrated feature in any Toyota. This is an advanced traction control that'll distribute torque wherever it needs to go. Works really well. And then finally, the rear locking diff, which is a rear locking diff. I don't think that needs to be explained too much. Wait, wait, don't turn it off yet, Tommy. Don't turn it off yet. You gotta show them the best part, which is the TRD exhaust. I personally think it's one of the worst parts, actually, because this V6 just kind of drones on and on and on on the highway. All right, well, let them decide. Do a little vroom vroom. Hold on. Anyway, I love that. I've got the Monroni or the sticker. Um, as you can see, as tested, we've got a final price of 52567 And Tommy, do uh, you like this uh, color? It's called uh, Lunar Rock. Of course. Gotta love Lunar Rock. It was one of the TRD uh, Pro exclusive colors, and it's fantastic. I also love the included roof rack, something that you don't get on the Bronco Sasquatch. And I love the storage capacity and capability of the Forerunner. This is a far more useful vehicle for holding and hauling stuff when compared to the four. So huge trunk. The seats do fold down very simply and easily. Really like the storage capability. And what is a tow dead? It tows about 5,000 pounds, Tommy, which is about 1,500 more uh, than the Bronco for some reason. And check this out. So if you are in the market for a Bronco, one thing you do have to be wary of is the spare tire mounted on the lift gate that adds length to the vehicle. And then it's not a lift gate. I misspoke on the swing gate because when you are in tight parking spots it does open up quite wide and stuff will fall out and it is a harder vehicle to get in and out of the trunk when compared to the forerunner so this is something that 
if you've got a family and you're constantly in and out of the back, something to keep in mind. Now we did something really interesting on the way out here to you, Ray. We actually did a MPG test, one of our tests where we saw what the vehicle says and what the car says. So we ran uh, both fuel tanks almost empty and they were, I'm not going to give it away because it's going to be in the off-road video. You're going to see exactly what kind of fuel economy these vehicles get. But according to the sticker, uh, the Ford is supposed to get uh, uh, 16 city, 19 highway, 17 combined. Uh, and I'll give you a hint, they came within about one mile of each other, uh, which is interesting because uh, the Bronco is rolling on much bigger tires. Alex, want to go over and uh, have Tommy demonstrate the interior of the Bronco. All right, so welcome to the Ford interior. Now this is a very different kind of setup than the Toyota. Um, I do have to say that I think the quality materials are probably worse. Actually, they're definitely worse than the Toyota. So there's a lot of kind of Ford cost cutting throughout here, down here in the middle, especially this kind of scratchy plastic material, almost looks pre-production unfinished, but you do have a lot more tech inside the Ford Bronco. Can I show you what I really hate? I hate this, like, this little like, this thing. I mean, look at that, that is. Toyota has that too. I know, but it just looks, you know what that looks like? That looks like a little box that you would throw away when you order some kind of like a cool iPhone and that's the packaging that gets thrown away. That's a kind of an odd thing to really dislike, but to each their own. Now these seats are called Navy Pier. You can get the Bronco in a bunch of different configurations from cloth to like a marine grade vinyl to this leather material. But let's go ahead and start up this vehicle. Foot on the brake and there it goes. Now from a gauge standpoint, partially digital gauges on this vehicle. So you can see there we've got um, speedometer on the left but then a digital speedometer in the middle and a digital tachometer in the middle, but it's a little weird because the tachometer kind of rises up and down like a thermometer. Uh, yeah, the bar graph speedometer and tachometer are not really my favorite things, but there's a lot of information displayed in the middle. Now this 12 inch screen is awesome. They did a fantastic job integrating the technology into the main display. You have wireless Apple CarPlay, which works great. Navigation there in the middle, all your apps, tons and tons of different features, um, including zone lighting. We also have settings for driver assistance, but lots and lots of integration. You can also split screen this with all sorts of different settings. It has off-road cameras and all those goodies. Now below that, you'll see both volume and tune knob, shortcuts for the cameras, and then dual zone automatic climate control, heated seats, and a heated steering wheel. Now when we talk about off-road gear, we're gonna put the automatic transmission into neutral, and unlike the Toyota, the four-wheel drive selector is button-based, so we can go into four high, go into four low, at the touch of a button. Now this vehicle also has drive modes. They are called GOAT modes, which is a little different. You activate them by spinning this little wheel and a bunch of them from rock crawl to mud to slippery, uh, pretty much all you'd come to expect. Now the transfer case is kind of fighting me. It wants me to move forward, which we will do in a second, but that's how you engage four wheel drive. And then up here are your hero buttons. So we have a sway bar disconnect. We have a front locking diff, a rear locking diff, something called turn assist, which will help you make tighter turns. So from an off-road toy standpoint, the Ford certainly has more of them. I'll put it to you that way. But what does that mean in the real world? Well, you're gonna have to stay tuned for our off-road video when we put them head to head. Now we didn't do uh, an exhaust note on the Bronco, but it just kind of sounds like a bunch of air. Do you want to? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Do an exhaust note, Alex. Let them listen to it. Like I said, it sounds more like a vacuum cleaner than like a powerful 300 plus horsepower power plant. Now, um, what do you think styling wise? I gotta say, I mean, they're both very different. Uh, the Bronco does a really good job of channeling its inner heritage, right? This is a third, fourth generation, right? There was original Bronco, the Bronco 2, the OJ Bronco, and now this Bronco. Yeah, there's a few other kind of facelifts mixed into the mix. There was like the 78 Bronco, and then you had the bull nose style. Anyways, there's a lot of different variations. Um, I think they're both great. I actually love the Bronco look, and I love the foreigner look even though the foreigner is a little bit dated i still think it's one of the best looking suvs on the market but dad i think it's time we start wrapping this up and drive them across the river yeah we got to drive them up and over the river uh to get the uh 
uh, trail. Uh, Imogene is a classic Colorado off-road trail. It's got everything. It's got ghost towns. It's got rock climbing. It's got meadows. You drive through a river. Uh, so at least let's give them a taste of off-roading. Alex, once you head down there, we'll get across the river. Uh, and then if you want to see the continuation of this video, give us a few days to edit it. and It'll be over at TFL Off-Road. Or you can go uh, to tfl dash studios studios.com where we have all of our videos of course uh, I want to thank our friends at the Ronald McDonald house we got this Bronco because of Tim so if you're looking for a great charity to support make sure you check that out and of course our friends at Onyx Tommy Onyx off-road yep they made this video series possible check them out if you want to find the best trails in your area so Alex why don't you walk down to the bridge and then we'll drive across yeah, which, which which one do you want uh, you can take the yellow one. all right I'll take the yellow one actually orange. it's the orange orange one Be sure to stay tuned for this off-road adventure because it just gets harder from here on out.